you. All right. Let me get started. Well, like Pastor Eric said, my name is Will Edison. It's a privilege to be here. I'm excited to be here with you guys. Uh, when he explained the prompt to me, generation to generation, I'm not going to lie. First of all, it made me feel old, okay, <laughs> because in my mind, I'm like, I am the younger generation. I am you guys, but then you guys are probably like, no, nah, give it up. You, you're, you're pretty old. Uh, and then also, if you notice, he said one thing. So then it also made me feel a little bit pressured, right? It made me feel like I'm on my deathbed. And I have one last thing to say, to pass along to you guys, and it better be good because this is my last chance, my one thing. So obviously he didn't mean it that way, but in my brokenness, that's how I take it. And if I were to take it strictly like that, I, I mean, I'd just share the gospel with you, the, the most important thing, uh, that Jesus Christ, truly God, truly man, has truly accomplished all that is required for right relationship with God, to know and enjoy Him forever. I mean, that's the most important thing. Whether you're a believer or an unbeliever, that's what we all need to know and be reminded of all the time. So I'm not going to talk about that today because the problem is I talked about that last time. I don't know if you were here, but we talked about the law and the gospel. We talked about how the law requires of us perfect obedience but we fall short of that standard, but Jesus has fulfilled the law on our behalf so that all who look to him in faith can be saved. Um, so that's what we talked about last time I was here. So this time I want to kind of build on that. It's kind of like, well, what do we do now? Okay, I'm right with God. Everything is awesome, right? Have you guys, the Lego movie, anyone? <laughs> yeah? Everything is awesome. <laughs> Everything is cool when you're right with God. Okay. <laughs> but seriously, what do we do now? What is God's will for my life? I'm here now. I'm right with God. I want to please him, but what do I do? I mean, my name is Will, so I, I thought it would be fitting. You know, <laughs> what does Will have to pass along but God's will, right? So anyways, um, my hope for this is that you know, sometimes when we think about God's will, it's, it's kind of, at least for me in the past, it's been a source of anxiety for me in a sense. Like it's this cloudy mystery thing. And it's like, oh no, do, do I turn left? Do I turn right? Do I put on these shoes? Do I put on those shoes? Do I, what school am I supposed to go to? What job am I supposed to take? Or even, you know, smaller things. Uh, what club am I supposed to join? What friends am I supposed to be friends with? And it can be a source of anxiety for us. So my hope is that this would be uh, comforting for you guys, um, that in clarifying what the concept of God's will is, that uh, you would have comfort, that you would have confidence to proceed uh, in seeking after his will. So why don't I pray for us to get started, and then we'll get into it. Heavenly Father, you are so good and gracious to us. Thank you that you have made a way for us to know and enjoy you forever in Christ. What a blessing this is, Lord, from that place. We, we do. We want to know what you want us to know. We want to do what you want us to do. Lord, ultimately, we, we want to do your will. So help us to do so, Lord. Help us to understand your word and apply it to our lives. And ultimately, help us to know and understand your will that we may be empowered by your spirit to do it to the glory, and through Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we're going to be in Deuteronomy today. Don't skip that book. I know sometimes if, if you're anything like me from generation to generation, you do a Bible in a year plan, you start in Genesis, you're trucking along, Exodus, you're still going, moving slower, and then Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, it's going downhill. But don't skip it. There's some good stuff there. Like Deuteronomy 29, 29, which says this, The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things that are revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. Now, 
right off the bat, if you'll notice, it is talking about passing along things from them to their children forever. So that's bonus points for me because it goes with the series well. But also, you'll notice right off the bat, hey, I thought we were going to talk about God's will. Nowhere in here does it say the words God's will. So what, what's going on here? Well, it doesn't say those words, but conceptually what you're going to find here is two primary kinds of God's will. Okay? It's going to be the secret things, so God's secret will, if you will, and the things that are revealed, God's revealed will. I think part of the reason why the, the question of God's will is so confusing at times is because there are a lot of different kinds of God's will, even in the Bible itself. And so this verse is summarizing two primary kinds, maybe the most important distinctions of God's will, his secret will and his revealed will. So let's define our terms, get a little clarity on what they are so then we can apply it to our lives. So God's secret will, what is it? Well, it's a secret, okay? <laughs> But seriously, though, a secret is that, you know, some, some people know it, but others don't, right? So when it comes to God, if it's his secret will, it's that which only God knows, right? So God knows everything. He's infinite in knowledge. He knows, I mean, those, those questions that you have that aren't addressed in the Bible, that aren't anywhere in the universe, he knows the answer to. On top of that, he knows the future. He knows what's going to happen tomorrow. And the next day, and the next day, and the next day, he knows what's going to happen if this happens and that happens. He knows it all. And he not only knows it all, but he's decreed it all from eternity past, which is just a fancy way to say from before even time, God, you know, whatever word you want to use, God ordained, God chose everything that would come to pass. And if that's a little bit confusing to you, welcome to the secret things, right? It, there is, a, there is a, a sense in which that hits our limitation of our understanding. So, again, when we think about the secret things, especially in relation with God's will, um, think of those answers that we don't have answers to, but God does, and think about the future. Okay, what's going to happen tomorrow, the next day, the next day, the next day. That's the secret things that belong to God. On the other hand, we have God's revealed will. Now, I don't mean to insult your intelligence. That's just how the chart worked out. Okay, obviously, God's revealed will is that which he has revealed to us. But what does that mean? Simply put, um, God, being infinite in knowledge, self-contained, independent, he has chosen to communicate himself in, in some things to us. Right, so he has revealed some things to us. He's revealed who he is. He's done some acts in history, and he's revealed what he's done in history. He's explained it and told us a little bit about what he's done in history. He's revealed himself in Christ, most of all, because Jesus is God. So he's, in some sense, the, the climax of the revelation of God. And then he's also told us some things to do. Right? So he's, he's given us his will, his, some commandments. Right? So that, that encompasses God's revealed will. Um, he's revealed himself in many times, in many ways. He's done so through tablets of stone and fire, burning bushes, uh, clouds and lightning. I'm trying to think of other ones. He's done so in many times, in many ways. Um, he's done so through apostles and prophets, and thankfully... Those apostles and prophets have preserved God's words for us, inspired by his hand. They've written down God's words so that at this time in history, if we want to know God's revealed will, we can look to his word, the Bible, the Old and New Testaments. That's really the words of God, not necessarily directly to us, but for us today. It, it sufficiently contains everything that we need to know for life and godliness. Um, whether it's something that we are to believe or whether it's something that we are to do in regards to God. It, it has all of that. 
So that's what his revealed will is. Let's circle back to the verse. What, what, are we, what is this verse getting at now that we understand these things? Well, it's saying the secret things, so what's going to happen tomorrow, the next day, the next day, the next day, that belongs to the Lord our God. But the things that are revealed, namely his word, the Bible, that belongs to us and to our children forever that we may do all the words of this law. So what does this mean for us? Like that's, that's all great. Let's, let's bring it to practical level. So what are we supposed to do with that? What do we do with the secret things? Well, it doesn't mean we do nothing with them. I mean, there's a reason why God has re- revealed to us, has told us that he has this secret. Right? It makes us want to know it a little bit more, I guess. Whenever a friend tells you that, you ha- that they have a secret, it uh, makes you want to know it. But <laughs> positively, remembering that the secret things belong to God can bring us great awe. It can bring us worship. It can bring us thankfulness. What does this look like? Well, when we do reach that ceiling of understanding, um, when we do reach you know, a question, God, you know, I just... I, I don't know. I don't know how this works. I can't make sense of it, but I remember that you do. You know how it works because you're God and you know everything. That brings us great praise and worship for this big God, and it makes us you know, humble because we realize our, our knowledge is limited. Beyond that, um, not only those answers that we don't have the answers to, but think about the future. You know, God, I... I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And frankly, sometimes it makes me a little anxious. But I remember that you do know what's going to happen tomorrow. And, and you'll be with me no matter what. So that, that helps me to trust you. That helps me. That brings me worship, That remembering that God knows the future. And it's in his hands, ultimately. And even so, it can bring us great thankfulness as well. So it is true that the secret things are a secret to us. In the future, what's going to happen tomorrow, the next day, the next day, the next day. But we can also look back on our lives and see how the secret things have played out. We can look back and see God's hand and say, wow, God, I see how you brought me here and brought me there and had me orchestrated this conversation. That's kind of amazing. Thank you, God. It can bring us great thankfulness. So that the secret things belong to God doesn't mean there's nothing for us to do. It can bring us great worship and thankfulness. But it's also, there's a negative aspect to it as well. So, um, that it belongs to God negatively means that it doesn't belong to us. So what do we do with that? Well, my encouragement to you, and I think part of what this verse is getting at, is, hey, save yourself the anxiety. Save yourself the confusion of trying to pry in to the secret things of God when we're seeking His will. Okay, so like I said, there's some answers in the Bible that just simply aren't addressed. God in his infinite wisdom just, you know, has chosen that, hey, I don't think you need this. I don't think you need to know exactly how everything works out for life and godliness. So when we do reach that ceiling, save yourself the confusion of trying to work it, work it all out, rack your brain on something that just maybe not is not even in the Bible, that's not even there. But more so when we're thinking about God's will. Often we're thinking about the future, right? So, put negatively, do not worry about tomorrow. But instead, today has enough worries for itself. So, the secret things, what's going to happen tomorrow, the next day, the next day, that belongs to God. The future belongs to God. So often... I think what causes some of the anxiousness when we're thinking about what is God's will for my life is that really, in hindsight, at least for me, a lot of times I'm thinking about the secret things. I'm wanting uh, God to, hey, God, just tell me what's going to happen next week. Just tell me what's going to happen next year, next five years. Just give me a sign. Just give me a voice from heaven that, that tells me the one exact direction that you have decreed from eternity past for me to go, right? I just saw a truck that drove by that had Ohio State sticker. Does that mean that you want me to go to Ohio State? Oh, no, another one just passed by that has UK. Do you want me to go to UK? 
I'm so confused. Save yourself the anxiety, the confusion of trying to look for some peek into the future sign or some one exact path or direction that God has decreed from eternity past so often, most of the time. That's not for us to know. Leave those things up to God. And instead, what this verse is saying that is for us, that is something for us to be concerned with, is his revealed will. Okay? So when it comes to the question of God's will in this sense, if we want to know God's will, we can look to his word. So I encourage you in this sense, leaving the secret things up to God, focus instead on what's in his word. And we'll break down a little bit of what this looks like. First of all, it looks like being shaped in our character by his word. Okay, so whether it be receiving the preached word on Sunday, uh, or whether it be you're in your Bible yourself or being taught the word, no matter what that is, <clears throat> we're learning about who God is. We're learning about who Jesus is. And in doing so, it brings us great worship, and we want to be like him right? It gives us some good guidelines and guardrails. It gives us some good principles of how he wants us to live. What are his ways? So more than anything, when we, when we are thinking about God's will, I think this verse is encouraging us, hey, primarily be thinking about God's ways. Be thinking about how he wants us to do things, how he wants us to live. Um, you know, there are times when we'll look for direction on a specific decision. Uh, we're faced with a decision. Sometimes it's obvious. Okay, sometimes it's like, all right, am I going to be a chef or am I going to be a drug dealer? And, and, you look to, <laughs> and you look to the Bible and it's like, okay, yeah, that's pretty obvious. What, what, I, I don't think being a drug dealer is according to God's will. You're not loving your neighbor well, you're breaking the law, et cetera, et cetera. But a lot of times when we're wrestling with the question of God's will, it's, it's more so, you know, I don't know, the Bible doesn't necessarily address it specifically. So what do we do in those circumstances? Well, again, I would encourage you, seek God's will through his word. <coughs> seek to apply the principles of the Bible to your situation. I think you'd be surprised there's quite a bit that the Bible may have to say. Like when I'm, uh, my wife Sarah's back there. And it's funny because she asked me before this if I was going to shout her out, and I told her no. I wasn't lying. I told her I don't know, I think is what I think I meant to say. But anyways, it's not like a voice from heaven came down and said, here is your wife. Go marry her, right? No, that's the secret things. Instead, what did it look like in practicality? Well, just like any decision, it doesn't have to be a big decision like who you're going to marry. I mean, you guys probably hopefully are not think I don't know I'll leave that I'll leave that there <laughs> but just in the day to day even what school to go to maybe you know there's not there doesn't seem to be one exact direction for you to go well what do we do seek God's will through his word what does the bible have to say about this situation what does the bible have to say about in this case marriage what is it what what does a godly spouse look like what well, I want to look like a you know a godly man what does that look like and, and you're just living life, trying to live according to his ways. And then, yeah, along comes Sarah, my wife now, who, you know, is intriguing. And we're just kind of living life. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we seek God's will through his word. We do so prayerfully and in the context of community. So we don't have to do it alone. Um, as well. So as we're seeking, it's not like we're on a desert island, right, with the Bible and we just have to figure it out ourselves on this road map. But instead, uh, we can ask for God's help and guidance to help apply these things to our lives. Um, we can ask for the wisdom of trusted uh, helpers, trusted mentors, parents, friends, who are also seeking uh, God's will through his word. So, again, I, I, I kind of want to just take some of the 
the cloudiness out of this big topic of God's will. I'll, I'll start to close it up now, but in summary, again, seek God's will through his word. Okay, There might not be clear direction. It might not say exactly, back to my previous example, you know, Mary Sarah Edison, Mary Sarah Kelly. It might not say, join the chess team, not the basketball club. Again, it might be obvious if the whole chess team is, you know, doing drugs or something like that. I don't know why I keep mentioning drugs. But, uh, <laughs> but seriously, though, yeah, sometimes it is more obvious. But other times, it's not. And I just want to encourage you, hey, so often there's not – a one specific path. You don't have to wait for like some big sign or some big, you know, voice from God that's going to give you direction on which club to join. Now, we have a lot of freedom in this. Seek to live according to his ways. Uh, do so in the context of community. Do so prayerfully. Um, and like I said, you you have freedom to, you know, Apply these things in wisdom. Uh, it doesn't mean that, you know, there's not wisdom in, you know, seeking to think about how am I gifted? Uh, maybe I'm not gifted to play basketball in any stretch of the imagination. So maybe the chess team is for me as long as they're not doing drugs. And then, <laughs> or, uh, you know, what are, what are my desires? That, that plays into it too. You know, those are helpful things to consider as well. So it's not, I'm not, I don't mean to make it seem like so easy and just like so obvious, but again, I do want to take some of the mystery out of it. If when we're thinking about God's will, um, save yourself the anxiety of trying to figure out the future, of trying to figure out this one specific path that God has decreed from eternity past. And instead, um, seek to be informed by the principles of the word do so prayerfully in the context of community, and you'll be okay. There's freedom to, to just do something beyond that. Got it? So thank you so much for your time, guys. I really appreciate it. Um, I think we'll, now we'll break off into small groups. Cool. Yeah.